Good evening and a very warm welcome to your English news package with radio and television Tonga for the hour. Making headlines, Cabinet approves a decision to open borders in August under certain conditions. Tongan Prime Minister spoke as president of the sixth session of the Sit Dog Assembly in Lisbon Protocol last week. And the Dao Olunga Junior competition completed last night for Tourism Week 2022 with the theme Uniqueness of Tonga, Our Home. Now with the news in details. Tonga is expected to open its borders next month with no need for quarantine upon arrival. This comes after the CEO of the Ministry of Medic, Paula Mao, confirmed that Cabinet had approved the, the decision to reopen our borders. Mark Ake with more on this story. The CEO of the Ministry of Medec, Paolo Mao, said that the decision comes after surveys and advice from the Ministry of Health. He says if borders open in August, there will be no more quarantine, and a list of those who wish to be repatriated will be given to different airlines and travel agents to handle. Bookings and tickets will go back to commercial flights, however, Cabinet will make a decision on that before the public is informed. The plan is to have two flights every week in August, likely Mondays and Thursdays. This month will continue with one flight every week, with three days quarantine upon arrival. Meanwhile, the repatriation program continued today with two flights from Australia and New Zealand, carrying over 200 passengers. Mao said that if the Ministry of Health is satisfied with the survey on this month's flights, then the borders will likely reopen for travel. Tonga's Prime Minister Honorable Hukaba Miliko spoke as president of the sixth session of the Seats Dog Assembly in Lisbon Protocol last week. Honorable Hukaba Miliko emphasized the need to prepare a new cohort of children of the blue economy to oversee the transition to the new seats energy sector that is minimally dependent on fossil fuels and mostly dependent on renewable sources of energy, particularly the ocean, the largest solar collector on planet Earth. He said that the government of Tonga is working on establishing a partnership with the Global Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion Platform on development of the world's first pilot 1.52 megawatt floating OT. The Chief Secretary and Secretary to Cabinet Edgar Koka and the Kingdom of Tonga's Permanent Representative and Ambassador to the United Nations, His Excellency William Iva Ingatone, will lead this partnership on behalf of the government. Meanwhile, the new chair of Sitsu Dock Executive Council and Ambassador Tone, on behalf of the Kingdom of Tonga, signed a memorandum of understanding to cooperate on ocean energy and hosting of the Interim Secretariat of the Global Ocean Energy Alliance. Sitsu Dock is a United Nations UN recognized international organization established in 2015 with all the rights and privileges for addressing climate change, resilience, and energy security in small islands. It represents 32 small islands and low lying developing states across the globe and is so named because it is designed as a docking station to connect the energy sector in SIDS with the global markets for finance and sustainable energy technologies. SIDS DOC was established in 2015 and is a United Nations recognized international organization with all the privileges and rights to address climate change and energy security in SIDS. However, the PM is still in London at the moment while the Foreign Minister Honorable Fekita Molo Utoigamanu makes her way to Fiji for the impending Forum of Foreign Ministers meeting in Fiji. Despite COVID-19 in Tonga and the new rhinovirus flu, the Dao Olunga Junior Competition was accomplished last night for Tourism Week 2022 with the theme Uniqueness of Tonga, Our Home. The program was held at Kunsalote Memorial Hall and was organized by the Ministry of Tourism with different programs to commemorate His Majesty King Tubo the sixth birthday, which is celebrated every year on the 4th of July. 
Hilala Week is usually held every year at His Majesty's birthday celebration, but due to COVID-19, it has been cancelled in two years. The guest of honour at the programme was the Ambassador of Japan to Tonga, His Excellency Munenaka Kinsaku, together with his wife. In his keynote address, he said that he likes this year's Tourism Week theme. Children, our tradition is our uniqueness and there are things that make us unique and we are similar in some aspects, such as Tonga being a kingdom like Japan. In addition, when we pronounce the vowels in Tonga, it is similar to the Japanese language. It is important for Tonga and Japan to teach and to learn from each other's culture and traditions because that would be the way to improve and sustain our relationship while also respecting our uniqueness. Children, I encourage you to keep Tonga's tradition because that is one of the kingdom's origins and history through culture. The Tau Olunga Junior category for ages 5 to 8, Soasi Titi Latu, aged 8 from Tatakamotonga, win first prize. Second was Chasmin Moamholeva, aged 8 from Tatakamotonga, and English Amelia Tupuloto, aged 8 from Homa Giligao, at third place. The Tau Olunga Preteen category for ages 9 to 12 was won by Maata Finau, aged 10, from Ganokbolu. The first runner-up was Lidiana Lisala, aged 10, from Ganokbolu again, and the second runner-up went to Hena Hinano, aged 9, from Homagirikau. And lastly, the Tauolunga teen category for ages 13 to 17 was a tie in the first place between Merifonua, aged 13, from Hatafu, and Evaloni Belenato, aged 17, from Maufanga. In the second place, there was also a tie between Cecilia Valele, aged 16, from Holonga, and Fisi Piula Eteaki, aged 16, from Homa. And third place went to Gevalia Boese, aged 17, from Bili. The judges of the competition were Baholo, Cristina Sokai, and Motoriki Fatama. The people of Niwa for All have been dealing with uh, water shortages due to climate change for quite some time. However, the community were fortunate to receive water tanks from the Department of Climate Change of the Ministry of Maydeck. These tanks were commissioned by the Minister, who is also the Acting Prime Minister on Bobasi Day last week. It was one of Funga Wailahi's hopes that someday they find a solution to the water problem and their request for water tanks was finally approved, which was worth 565,000 New Zealand dollars. There were 168 tanks distributed to the outer islands, and nine communities in Niwa for All were included together with government schools and buildings. The NWTP was co-funded by New Zealand's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade and the Tindor Foundation. The acting Prime Minister and Minister for Maydeck, on Wapuasi Day, said that this would assist in solving the problem with a new for all facing water shortages at the island faces the impacts of climate change. He also expressed the government's sincere gratitude to the Government of New Zealand and the Tindall Foundation for their support. Niwa for All's government representative, Bob Taylor Donga, extended their gratitude on behalf of the people of Niwa for All Island, also known as the Tinken Mail. The principal of Niwa for All High School, Losaline Taufalele, thanked the New Zealand High Commissioner, His Excellency Matt Howell, for their country's generosity and to Medic for reaching out with the water tanks. The people of Niwa for All are very vulnerable to drought in addition to their isolation from the main island and the provision of core services by the government, giving them the chance to access clean drinking water with the water tank project is a step forward in the development of this island group, stated the Department of Climate Change under MEDIC. Meanwhile, more projects are being sought to facilitate the needs of people in Niwafo'o. People's representative for the two Niwas, Wata Hoi, including 
The CEO for Medic Paulamao was present at the event. The Fire and Emergency Services is strongly advising people to create fire emergency escape plans in case of a fire hazards. Mark Ake with the details. In a televised program of the Fire and Emergency Services Department, Paula Tuitupo said that they hope that planning will prevent future tragedies. Uluaki ke ilo ikoto he me mi pa family. He advised it is good to first have every member of the family know about this fire emergency plan and what to do when a fire breaks out in their house. He says second to that is to include members of the family who are living with disabilities as well as the elderly in this plan so they can practice what to do when a fire breaks out. And third is to install smoke detectors in the house so once it goes off they are alerted of what to do and urges people not to panic and follow through the plan so everyone can be safe. Our department discovered that houses where fire incidents occur in the past, families did not know how to escape during the incident. The also recommended for every house to have two entrances to make it easy for everyone in the house to escape and not be trapped inside. He said the best way to do so is crawl to the nearest exit and get out as soon as possible. The fire and emergency services have recorded house fires in the past two weeks and warns the public to be more cautious when using electrical appliances to avoid future tragedies. Workshops are being carried out to primary and middle schools to educate them on what to do during a house fire. The fire and emergency services also ask people to give way when the department's vehicles are rushing to emergencies on the road. And the New Zealand's Immigration Minister Michael Wood announced on Monday that they have opened up a work visa applications for people outside of the country as it takes another significant step forward in their reconnecting plan. Mark Aki again with more. New Zealand's Immigration Minister Michael Wood said this is the third and final stage of the new Simplified Accredited Employer Work Visa or AEWV policy which opened today, allowing migrants offshore to apply for a work visa to come and work in New Zealand for an accredited employer. Wood acknowledged that a major constraint on business currently is access to skilled labour and the accredited employer work visa will play a role in increasing the available pool of labour to fill skilled work shortages. The AEWV is focused on providing New Zealand with the skills they need while ensuring that migrants are fairly treated. Wood said they believe that the previous system in some cases facilitated a low-cost labour model that was neither good for the country or migrant workers. As such, the AEWV is centred on a requirement to pay at the median wage with limited exemptions for sectors that are transitioning. As part of the new AEWV policy, employers need to be accredited and have completed a job check before they are able to hire a migrant from offshore. Accreditation applications opened on the 23rd of May and to date 5,666 applications have been received. Of those, 4,322 have been approved. Job check applications opened on the 20th of June and to date 732 have been received. Meanwhile, an employer must have their job check approved before a migrant is able to apply for the role. Working visa applications are expected to be processed within 20 working days when the application is accurately filed. Partners and dependents of work visa applicants are also able to apply for visas starting today. At the same time, New Zealand's borders will be fully opened to the world at the end of the month, with student and visitor visa applications opening on the 31st of this month. And that concludes the tonight's English uh, news package. But before we part, here's one final look at tonight's top stories. Cabinet approves the decision to open borders in August under certain conditions. Tonga's uh, Prime Minister spoke as president of the sixth session of the Sixth Dog Assembly in Lisbon Protocol last week. And the Dawalunga Junior Competition completed last night for Tourism Week 2022 with the theme uniqueness of Tonga, our home. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Alice Dubo. Have a blessed evening.